Hi there. Today we're going to learn how to lengthen the basic bodice and perform the Dior cut. Now I'm going to show you how to lengthen a basic bodice to make, this is the real way to do it. You actually should trace it onto another piece of paper and work on the new paper, on the new image. I'm trying to get, keep my shadow out of the way here. So you extend the waist dart the same length down as you have above, which right here is, you know, on a, on a full-sized pattern, it would be 15 centimeters, but since we're working on a small pattern, this is 8. So, making sure you keep it straight, you move 8 centimeters down, and it, ha it should be perfectly squared. I can't find my square ruler right now, but uh, anyway, I'm keeping it straight because I know it's straight. So then just extend that. Let me keep out of your way here. And then you make another dart like a mirror image. So there's a dart going down the other way and you'll do it very neatly. What I did there, I made like a diamond shape there with the mirror image of the dart. And now from here you would measure down again to your fullest part of your hips. I'm not going to explain this very well because I think that at this point you can kind of figure it out. Move down to the widest part of your hips, wherever that might be, and then, you know, you would put, you would make sure there's enough room for your hips. This is the front, so it's plus one centimeter plus another half centimeter for ease. You would use a square ruler, which I can't find, and then just mark over the, to wherever your hip measurement is, you know, whatever shape you want. I mean, in this case, it's going to be like this. You know, t-shirts are not actually straight. They're really more this shape. Fashion Spade, Style is Eternal. That's by Yves Saint Laurent. You get a little insight into the Dior cut in this section of the book. She's actually using it in this section to show you how to copy a garment and make a pattern out of a garment. It shows how to copy this particular blouse, which has a Dior cut. But I'm going to show you the Dior cut, just how to do it from scratch. And I'm just going to be using mini molds today because it, it gets kind of hard to be using those big mold, uh, patterns all the time. When I say mold, I mean pattern. But see, it's basically this. You have the back bodice and then you have a... In this case, they've sewn the two side panels together, part of the front and part of the back. They didn't sew it together. They cut it out as one piece. And then here's the front. And if you have a quick look, you'll see that my blouse is actually cut same pattern as we happen to be making today. See here, and in the back, you'll see that small thing. The point number nine, Lucy dear, <laughs> point number nine, uh, if you were to draw your own bodice, that's just about where two-thirds of the armhole is. So you might use that as your guide if it's... And another thing, always remember when you make your basic bodice, you don't cut that particular basic bodice up, you're going to cut another one up. You'll, you'll make that and then you'll trace it. So, we close the dart. This is the front. And there you have it, three-dimensional. Cut the shoulder. That's the new shoulder line. And as you see, point number nine is actually just at about the place we want it to be. So we go ahead and cut down towards that midpoint, point 13, and then straight down the middle of the dart. Then just take the dart off altogether and when you sew it, it will be more tapered there, kind of more fitted. Now we add the seam allowances. In the case of the back, it's the same. Measure two-thirds down. But where the curve starts, actually, a little above the 13. So then do the same thing. You should really try to match it up with the front part. 
same thing. Of course, we'll cut it out. So now the last step is to stick it onto another piece of paper and, of course, trace the new shape. Okay. So then you have your new shapes. Okay. I like to use one centimeter margin. Now this is much smaller, so it would be less than one. So then mark it around the whole thing, measuring the one centimeter margin so that you will have the um, seam allowance and then cut out the new piece and that's your that's your new pattern which you will convert however you want and that would be a kind of interesting t-shirt maybe you can make two different colors but if you're going to be making a blouse you would you would add like more here double the amount you would want your placket to be because then you're going to be folding that over down the middle and then you'll be putting the buttonholes in and etc uh, that's a little more advanced than what I've taught you so far, but uh, you get the idea. You know, you don't have to have all your t-shirts with just this neckline. And that's actually, a lot of that is explained in the book, High Fashion Sewing Secrets. I hope I don't get in trouble for showing you this book on the internet. Claire Schaefer is the lady who wrote this book. Because meet Claire Schaefer, gives a little biography about her. She's worked with lots of very famous designers. Here's an introduction and she explains a little bit about her career, etc. And then there's two parts to the book. Part one is about finishing clothes, giving them the finishing touches that will make you stand out from other designers. You know, anyone can sew a t-shirt and, you know, different how-tos on the different finishes, which is really useful to you because if you notice my videos, I really don't finish the things that I show you. I kind of give you the basics and let you run with it. So you on your own will have to figure out what you want to do to put the finishing touches on your, on your clothes. And uh, the second part of the book is more about how to make your own pattern. Uh, how to do different necklines, you know, just the different things that you would need to do to change the basic patterns into whatever pattern you want them to be. And then, um, you get a little insight into the industry. Uh, this book is particularly useful if you already have a little bit of knowledge of pattern making. I think actually what you learned already with my videos about pattern making, which is very, very basic, that's probably enough for you to understand the book. It's not a high-tech book, but it uses some terms that maybe won't be familiar to you if you're just starting out, you know, you've never sewn before. But if you've already been through my how to make a basic bodice, how to, how to draft your own skirt pattern, you know, the previous videos up until this one, you'll probably already understand what the book is talking about. Fancy construction techniques. So, for example, it shows you all the different kind of seams that, that these famous designers use. And it's what makes their clothes stand out. Raised French seam. I mean, things that are not that difficult to do, but maybe you don't know how to do them and explain step by step how to do them. And aside from that, she also puts in her little secrets throughout the book. Here's Ralph Lauren, everything, you know, things about those designers. Um, and that's in the first part of the book, binding a neckline, just all these beautiful things you can do to the clothes, how to label the pattern for the factory, because they have to understand what you've done. Um, how to estimate the fabric yardage. Transfer a dart. That's what it says there. Transferring a seam. So you not only ha can trans, you can not only transfer darts, you can also transfer darts and turn them into seams. To camouflage a large bust line, shift the shoulder seams forward and add tucks to your favorite blouse pattern. That's for transferring a seam. So they show you how to move the on your pattern, move the seam instead of being on the shoulder, moving the seam forward a little bit. And then apparently adding a tuck here, it will camouflage a large bust line. Uh, things like that. Figure fat flattering seams. She talks about that on this page. Think twice before eliminating a seam at the center back of a skirt or jacket. Eliminating that seam will make a figure look wider. On a shirt, the seam is especially flattering on larger figures, and on a skirt, the seam allows you to fine-tune the fit. 
I might get in so much trouble for, you know, telling you what the book says, but <laughs> it's really so that you will really consider investing in this book, which is not that much of an investment. I paid $21.95 for this book. I bought it in a bookstore, but you actually can buy it on Amazon.com. And new, a paperback like this one on Amazon, I saw it for $15. And then if you buy a used one, I believe I saw it for about $8 or $9. I click the links through my blog and buy something on Amazon, I get a little bit of a commission. So, and even if you don't buy this book, buy another book on Amazon. The basics of pattern making and design don't change. Styles change, but the very basics stay the same.